Good morning. Morning. How are you, Andrew? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, very good. Very good. Thanks, mate. Okay, so we're uh, super excited, and we should probably say good morning to everyone else. We can. I can start to see uh, people um, people filtering in now, which is great. So I can see uh, see the guys kind of uh, pilling pilling through. So uh, good stuff. Super super happy about that. So uh, welcome to the first uh, digital growth show. Thank you for uh, being with us. I guess we're gonna be here for the next, um, we'll see how it flows, 25, 30 minutes. We don't wanna keep you guys too long. We wanna keep it uh, kind of uh, bubbling along. So just by way of introduction, obviously, uh, I'm Andrew. Uh, nice to see everyone. Amit, I'll throw over to you. Yeah, hi everyone. So I'm Amit um, and, and me and Andrew both work together at Nexa. Um, and um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully you guys will kind of enjoy this and have some really good takeaways on the back of this. Yeah, I just want to make sure that everyone can hear the sound. So for those of you that are, we just had a bit of feedback that somebody couldn't hear the sound. So just um, if you could, if somebody else is having some issues, just uh, please let us know. Uh, we can hear each other. So I'm hoping that everyone else can hear as well. Okay, so we're getting some feedback now. Yes, I can hear the sound. Wonderful. Yeah, I hear you loud and clear. Um, well, great. Sorry, I just saw someone from uh, you see the radio show. Good stuff. Um, so that's good news. We, everyone can hear loud and clear. So um, I think um, the idea of this show really, and we can kind of talk talk a bit about it at the at the top here, is the show is designed to be for for you. Uh, the really around you know everyone that's watching and participating. That's what the show is really for. We decided to uh, have this conversational style so we can bounce back and forth and really talk about real things. So what's happening in the market at the moment, what was happening you know, six weeks ago, two months ago, and potentially what can happen um, now. So we want to, to keep it very real uh, and very honest. Um, but I guess we want to get a bit of a better feel for, uh, for the people who, who are out there. Right, Emmett? Yeah. Yeah, it'd be good. I mean, like, like like what Andrew said, I think the, you know, what we're really trying to achieve here is 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 not just look at what's happening now. You know, we know that everyone's facing a lot of sort of challenges. Um, you know, there's a lot going on that people are having to deal with, um, both on kind of you know personal and professional levels. Um, but I guess uh, what we really want to do is start looking forward, right? And and really kind of looking into into the future. But yeah, like Andrew said, I think you know the show is about you guys, so it'd be really good to understand you know who's in the room, who's watching. Um, you know, so that we can, you know, we can adapt the content. I mean, this is supposed to be a very kind of interactive show. Um, you know, it's not about slide decks or anything like that. You know, we want to have kind of real conversations and, and really kind of, you know, make this as sort of grounded as possible. Yeah. So with that in mind, we just want to uh, put up our first poll. So our first poll is going to be um, essentially who's logged in. So we want to understand, you know, potentially, you know, from a job role perspective or, or just kind of where you are within your organization. So are you that business owner or business leader? Are you marketing professional, sales professional, uh, IT professional, business strategist, or perhaps other? So I think this, as Amit mentioned, will help us kind of try to understand who's in the room um, and potentially, you know, adjust the conversation accordingly. Uh, we're obviously going to be talking across a wide range of uh, subjects. So I'll just leave that up there for uh, for another couple of seconds. We've got kind of um, the moment, um, that's good. We've got kind of a bit of a split between uh, marketing and business owners. Uh, marketing professionals seem to be seem to be in the lead at the moment, if it was a race. <laughs> um, so I think, um, I think it looks like pretty much everyone has taken the chance to vote. So let me just end that poll. And and I guess we can see the see the outcome there. Yeah, yeah, great. Okay, so I think that gives us a great idea. Um, so here we are. I think this is sorry. Yeah. I mean, I'm just sharing the poll here. So we've got, got uh, you know in the room here, guys, just to give you an, an understanding. So yeah. Okay. So so the majority of people are either kind of business business owners or leaders or marketing professionals, and I think that that kind of helps us. Um, great. Thanks, Andrew. So. Let's, right, so um, 
But I think, you know, as we kind of look forward, I think it might make sense to kind of look at where everyone is right now as well. So we've got an idea of who's in the room. Um, you know, we're, we're what, two months really into how sort of COVID-19 has really kind of been, been impacting us. You know, I think it was kind of second week of March um, where we really started to see the impacts firsthand. Um, and, and I'm conscious of, you know, talking about the UAE or the Middle East as a region. I think today we've got people tuning in from the States, Canada, Australia. Um, okay. So thanks for all of you, yeah, and the UK as well. So, um, but again, I think, I think for most of the world, it was really kind of mid-March when, when we really started to kind of feel firsthand what the impact was. Um, and I know what we went through. I mean, it was very challenging because I'd say even at the beginning of March, we were still looking at this as someone else's problem, yeah. right? You know, we, we had meetings and we were saying, look, you know, there's, there's a potential that this, you know, does uh, start to impact us over here and impact, uh, impact our other offices in, in the UK and the US as well. But, you know, we felt as if uh, the probability of that happening was, was pretty low, right? And it wasn't just, you know, us trying to look at data and trying to dissect it. You know, this information was coming from leaders, right? You know, from the UK, from the US. Yeah. And, and so we didn't really see it as being, you know, too much of a problem, you know, if we're honest. Um, but I think the speed at which this did start to impact us um, was, I think, the most surprising thing. And the way it accelerated, I think, was pretty scary, right? So, so if I go back to that sort of mid, mid-March time when, when we really started to see the impact, you know, we started getting phone calls from clients who were saying, look, you know, we either have to close our business or, you know, we're seeing a massive decline in, in our business. We may have to, you know, put, put contracts on hold. I think that's when we really started to see, okay, look, this could be a huge problem. And, and you know, we weren't working from home at that point or anything like that, right? It was full offices. Yeah. I, I think, you know, from, you know, as, you know, essentially the CEO of a company, I think the challenges I faced at that point were, okay, what do we kind of make of this, right? If this does continue to accelerate, um, you know, what do we do? How do we kind of understand um, how we should be dealing with these emotions? Um, and, and I think at that point was when I, I really started to kind of read more about psychology and, and, and really kind of understand different kind of business models. Um, because, you know, and I, you know, been running this business for 15 years, but there's been businesses prior to that. And it's, it was just really interesting how, um, how actually my emotions we're just up and down every single day, right? Try, it was almost like a bit of a roller coaster. One day you're thinking, right, this is the way forward. The next day something else has changed. And then you go back and think, okay, maybe that wasn't the way forward. And, and it was trying to kind of, um, I'd say, you know, collate all of these kind of feelings, right? I mean, do you remember those conversations, Andrew? I mean, it was, it was, it was so ever changing, right? I mean, it yeah. was just so fluid and so dynamic in terms of what was going on. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think we're very, we're very fortunate. We've come to realize that we are fortunate, you know, having five partners that we have the ability to share some of those emotions, some of those fears, frustrations, um, you know, and, and actually part of the reason why we, we looked at launching this series was, was essentially to help some individuals that perhaps don't have that support network. Um, so it was, it was on a, on a daily basis, there was obviously there was information coming out from a global perspective. There was information coming out from a local perspective and then also uh, just um, from a government. So, you know, as, as Amit mentioned, we, I think we were one of the, as an independent organization, uh, we were one of the first to say, okay, guys, start from work from home. Um, and, and really we, 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 that was, and that was a decision. But at that time, it was it was a challenge to make decisions because obviously things were changing on a daily basis. Yeah, and, and I think from my perspective, again, it was just really trying to understand: look, is is what we're feeling normal, or right? is everyone else kind of going through this? Yeah, I think I think we're fairly fortunate that uh, you know we have quite a wide network. So we had we had even outside of the partners, you know, there were other people that I was speaking to, other business leaders, and trying to gauge if yeah. they were going through the same emotions, right? But you know, and and although it felt like they were. I wasn't sure if that was still right. You know, is it, is it kind of normal to do that? And, and I, guess, um, I guess what I'm getting to is I came across um, basically different kind of business models and different models of crisis. And I came across uh, Elizabeth Kubler-Ross's uh, grief cycle. And, and this was just very random. I wasn't even looking for anything related to, you know, personal tragedy or anything like that. But essentially, Kubler-Ross created this grief cycle um, based on her experience. And this, this is a study going back to the 1960s. Um, and it was, and it talks about the different stages of emotions um, 
that people go through, you know, during times of crisis. And in her case, it was with uh, cancer patients. And so I kind of looked at this and said, okay, this is, this is really interesting because a lot of what she talks about in the model is, is what I felt I was going through. You know, lots of kind of ups and downs. It was, uh, you know, waves of emotions. Um, but ultimately, you know, our role as leaders is to make sure that we're not, I say, I guess, sharing those waves of emotions to our staff and to our clients, right? We can't afford to be, you know, up and down, you know, and go backwards and forwards. So, you know, although we were kind of managing this on a, on a kind of psychological level personally, I think what we needed to do was, you know, really kind of understand this within a framework. And I'm going to share my screen, um, and I promise it's not a slide deck, but I'm going to share my screen just to show you what we, <laughs> what we sort of came up with. Because um, we looked at, we looked at Kubler-Ross's model and said, okay, this doesn't necessarily apply to the business world. Um, but I'm not a psychologist, um, you know, essentially, you know, just a business leader. So I, I wanted to understand if this actually made sense. And so I spoke to a friend of mine, a guy called Mark Williams, and um, he's, he's, you know, a leading um, HR consultant who's been in this region for a long time, but he's now in the UK as a business coach. And, um, and this is very much kind of, you know, what he does. And I, I spoke to him about it and I said, look, I'm trying to get my head around this. Um, you know, what are your thoughts? You know, what is it that, you know, do you think this applies? Is this just me? And he looked at it and said, no, he said, I've been working on a very similar study and I think this model works really well. But he said, for you, the original model by Kubler-Ross, sorry, um, maybe isn't correct. And so he said, look, I've been thinking about sort of adapting that model. And so we looked at these different stages and, and basically, you know, from denial. So I think that very first stage is when we said, you know, this is, you know, is this going to happen to us? Yeah. Right. This is someone else's problem, essentially. Um, and all the way through to kind of, you know, anger, where you start to get maybe, maybe more angry, like, you know, why is nobody helping us? This is really going to kind of impact our business. Um, we had a crazy sort of, good month in February. We were right. going to smash it in March. Smash it in April. Yeah, exactly. 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 <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, and, and, and all of those kinds of different emotions, right? You know, how are we going to survive? You know, and then you get to that sort of bargaining and rationalization stage where you start to kind of come to terms with it a little bit more. But then all, as you're kind of, you know, feeling a little bit more positive about it, you know, you start to kind of despair. Is this going to work? Is this really going to make a difference? Yeah. You know, who do we need to speak to? What do we need to do? And then all the way through to that sort of acceptance stage. And, and what Mark added, which I felt was really valuable, was the action point. He said, because when people start to accept that there's, you know, maybe only so much they can do, they can start to kind of create better actions. And I felt that was really, really interesting. So I guess, you know, it's kind of long story short, I think what would be really useful, I guess, especially for the business leaders and, and some of you guys who are kind of managing teams and, and taking care of people, uh, or have, you know, business responsibilities as such, you know, at what stage of the um, cycle are you guys at? So, so Andrew, I'll keep the slide on for a second longer, but if you could pull up that poll, I think it'd be good to kind of get a gauge on, on where everyone's head's at right now. Yeah, I think also the, um, here we go. So here we go. So you guys should be able to see the poll now on your screen. So, I think um, I think what we found interesting is we we were on a, another um, webinar earlier on l last week, and they were talking about where you're at at the moment in in your activity, and we were quite surprised um, that there was people still relatively early on uh, in, in in denial and anger stage almost. You know that people were, we, we, as we've mentioned, we're a good six to eight weeks down down the journey, but. Um, but obviously, it's, it was still people all over the map, really, when, when it came to that. So I think, uh, yeah, this is int uh, interesting. So we've got, uh, got uh, some of this coming through now. Uh, so there seems to be majority at the moment is uh, acceptance and action, which I think is uh, close to 70%, which is great. Uh, despair and depression to 11%, bargaining and rationalization at 10 But we've still got 7% down there at denial. Everyone, yeah. it seems like we've got a pretty happy room because there's not any angry. No one's answered angry at the moment. <laughs> yeah, this is true. Actually, I, I, I tell you, yeah, an, interest, an interesting part of this, I spoke to, uh, I spoke to Mark again um, a couple of days ago about this. And, and he said to me, he said, a lot of what he's seeing with his clients is people who were perhaps at the, you know, acceptance or action stage a couple of weeks ago have almost now gone back down that sort of reverse slide and, and are now kind of, you know, second guessing yeah. the decisions they made. 
uh, things haven't maybe changed in a way that they'd hoped or anticipated. And, um, and, and, you know, and, that, and I guess that's, again, similar things that we all go through because, you know, we can all make decisions based on the data we have, you know, the kind of gut feel that we have. I mean, all of these things are really important. Um, but the point is, and I think this is important in terms of understanding this model, is you can kind of start interchanging between different stages. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, I, and I think that's really super important for you guys to understand as well, you know, in case you have, are, you know, feeling really positive one day, and the next day kind of less positive and then start to sign a kind of second guess. I think the key to this, um, and I think this is something that we've done is, is be prepared to, you know, change decisions. If you feel as if, you know, something was hundred percent correct and right a couple of days back, but may no longer, may no longer apply today, be brave, right? Make those decisions. Um, you know, don't, don't kind of stand firm unless unless you know you're you're fully aware of the consequences of, of you know perhaps not being dynamic because this whole environment is very fluid we've had we've had clients who've um paused contracts had contracts come back a couple of weeks later and said right we're ready to go again and two days later said sorry we're gonna have to pause again you know we're not ready yeah and and, and, and I, I think, think you know, the, and that changes yeah i think it changes i think Amit, we might as well pull off that slide now mate we don't want to kill people with uh this powerpoint right so uh, and, and what people really want to see, Amit, um, is, uh, is, is us, right? Um, I noticed there was a comment that they were saying it's a bit fuzzy. I think that's just my beard. But um, yeah, so I, I think the, the thing is here, when we're, as we've mentioned at the moment, what we're seeing in the market is obviously there's outside forces that are impacting activity. So even down to when you look at Kuwait, when everything was pretty much opened up and they'd opened up various, uh, uh, you know, showroom shops, coffee shops, et cetera, that came back down again over the weekend. So we've got clients there that have been impacted now that have showrooms that were kind of effectively opening their showrooms. We saw similar things in Saudi. So I think what we've what we've realised through all of this that it's it's okay um, to to you know essentially make changes to those decisions, right? Even though they may be very firm. So for example, we've decided to keep our team still working from home. Uh, some organisations have taken the thirty percent rule and kind of you know helped people back into the office environment but we're still uh working working from home so it i think that's that's important right mate just to just to kind of realize that it's okay not to be right yeah 100 percent. because i don't i mean no, no one knows the answer to any of these questions if i'm honest with you right you know when when is this going to end when are things going to get better when are we going to be able to kind of operate and function as normal are we ever going to be able to operate and function as normal, right? I think those, those are really kind of important points. And so, you know, and we're seeing big, big companies like Google made a decision, I think last week, where now they're going to keep all of their workforce at home until at least the end of yeah. 2020. Um, and I, I kind of feel as if um, look, people need stability. Uh, uncertainty is always dangerous. And, and I think at that point, people start kind of, you know, perhaps making wrong decisions when, when they're not certain of certain facts of specific facts. So, you know, I think what people will start to do, maybe those decisions that were made every week or every couple of weeks or maybe every month, I think those will slowly start to change to maybe the next quarter or perhaps even like what Google have done, you know, until the end of the year. Um, and, but I think that's really kind of important to recognize as well. Andrew, yeah, you're out there in the market, you're speaking to business owners, you're speaking to marketing folk. Um, how are you kind of seeing the market right now? You know, what, what's people's kind of that? what's people's appetite to go and spend money to to invest in um you know in the marketing and, and things like that what, what what are you seeing yeah i, I like um, i like you calling them marketing folk because it feels very lord of the rings so i quite, I quite like that <laughs> um as far as yeah what do you mean kind of right now as we sit here today or a few weeks ago or kind of what what do you what do you feel yeah, yeah, yeah perhaps maybe well what's changed maybe look look back at uh, say maybe middle of march end of march through to today i mean what what, what kind of I mean, is there any change is there, yeah you know? I, I i would say there is a change i think there was definitely um we spoke about this earlier on that you know that's somebody else's um somebody else's issue somebody else's problem to handle so i think in the early days things were you know, pretty much on on the straight and narrow as far as conversations. So conversations that perhaps you were having, you know, for the previous month or two months were still happening. There was no kind of hard stop. Um, and then I think that what happened is as soon as it started to really impact and everyone started to see how it impacts not only on their work life, but perhaps their partner's work life, their friends, etc. 
at that point there was there was a kind of nervousness or slowdown as far as okay hold on um you know what what's happening but it was very it was very interesting so there were some people that were like right i've got a budget i need to spend it what can i do um almost a fear that they may lose it right um that it's already been allocated and then other people were kind of holding back um but i say that was a short period so really the the, the kind of short period was um you know complete slowdown but then there was conversations that started to happen and the conversations were slightly different so the conversations now are very roi driven right so i have something it may not be as much as before but um i want to get the best value from it right okay. i want to i want to try and, and and the interesting thing here is is also other individuals that are looking at digital for example and digital marketing that haven't looked at that before because there is an RO element. So I'd say that what's happened is, you know, you've almost had that shift from not sure some people have it because I may lose it. And now you're getting people coming through saying, well, look, whatever I do, I want to make sure that I'm getting some sort of return. Um, okay. This, this really isn't a time to be building a brand um, as far as awareness. People want sales. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, look, I think I think it'd be interesting to ask the uh, ask the audience as well. Yeah. yeah. So um, let's let's pull up that poll. Um, yeah. We've got a poll that's that's been created, and we just want to kind of understand if um, if your marketing budgets have been cut. So I know we have a lot of, like I said, business owners and um, marketing folk, as you like that, Andrew, yeah. uh, in yeah, the audience. Yeah. So let's um, let let's ask you. You know, how has your marketing budget? been impacted since um, since COVID started spreading and sort of impacting our businesses. Okay, so let's load that up. Perfect. Yeah, I think as as that as that starts to load and as people, as we can see, start to start to answer, I think um, you know the, the the real interest is here is is what will happen as well. So this is now. Um, so I mean, you know, what will happen, perhaps? Sure. Yeah, I guess the impact of marketing budgets being cut right now will perhaps sort of impact people moving forward, right? Especially perhaps B2B companies, yeah. you yeah. know, where the return is maybe three to six months or even 12 months down the line. Um, that, that's true. Yeah. It, yeah. I think yeah. Um, that's, that's a good point actually, because, you know, when we look at marketing efforts, uh, some people are not looking necessarily for leads and sales now because their yeah. sales cycle is so long. How yeah. those, how those results look? Yeah. Like? Interesting. Really interesting. So more than half, uh, more than half are saying that their budgets have been cut by over 50%. Some oh. are saying over 75%. Yep. So okay. about half of half of those over 50% are saying it's over 75%. That's really interesting. Mm. Um, okay. Yeah. I think that gives us a really kind of good idea. I guess that's pretty consistent with what you're seeing in the market then. And, and, and what you're saying is, is uh, people who, you know, are willing to spend money, those, those lucky ones who do have budget left over are, much more kind of return conscious, I guess. They want to see they want to see some bang for their buck, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, they they have to. I mean, this uh, if they're fortunate enough. So I mean, it sounds like most people's budgets have been cut. So yeah. I think um, you know that uh, marketing budgets weren't super relaxed anyway. They were quite tight. So sure. I think to now squeeze it even harder, and um, they want to make sure that they get every kind of juice, uh, every drop out of the juice, or of course every drop out of the orange. So. I think, um, yeah, it's interesting to see how that's happened now. I think, yeah. I mean, it's probably worth taking a deeper dive in this, uh, perhaps in some later shows, just to understand, okay, well, what are the choices? You know, what, what can people potentially do? Um, where are some of the avenues that they may want to focus some of that marketing budget, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, so look, I, I guess, um, you know, it's funny because, you know, I, I can go back to uh, perhaps the last recession. You know when when yeah. the same sort of thing happened and it's funny how marketing budgets always seem to be amongst the first that get cut mm. um and yeah. then i can understand that right in, in some cases people can't draw a straight line between what they're doing from a marketing perspective through to revenue Very and, true. and yeah. for, for any company who, who doesn't really know you know what marketing generates for them um mm. you know marketing does make sense perhaps to cut and i i, I'm, I fully agree with those kind of business owners mm. um but I do feel as if you need a plan B, right? So if you are going yes. to cut marketing budget, just in case marketing actually was having an impact for you, what, what do you do next, right? Because, yeah. you know, if you don't have a plan B, 
um, perhaps this is this is maybe you know a short a short fast way of of potentially losing your business right if, if suddenly you've got yeah. no inquiries no footfall whatever that looks like yeah. um so it'll be interesting and i think you're right andrew i think let's let's kind of look at this in a bit more detail let's perhaps you know help people with some plan b's if they are in that situation yeah. you know we understand uh, and look we were in a very similar position where we had to look at what we were spending um mm. you know but i think because of like you know the nature of what we do we've got not just a plan b but a plan c d and e as well so <laughs> yeah. um but but let's let's kind of yeah let's let's try and help people out in that way you know those who yeah. those who have had budgets cut and perhaps not sure where where they can just start generating leads or, or new customers from yeah i think what's important so, is you touched yeah. upon this and it was the the fact that there is that um you may not know the impact now right if you stop marketing obviously because you're a restaurant that makes sense or you're a hotel but if you're involved in selling widgets for xyz and usually widgets for xyz take nine months to to you know come to fruition uh, you're not going to know about it right and then it's going to be right. too late so yeah yeah okay awesome um andrew i think i think just um one thing i want to talk about i mean we've, we've looked at i guess the past or or almost like where we are right now okay with yeah. the uh, with the crisis model um, I think we've seen some of the challenges that people are going through in terms of uh, budget constraints and, and, and things like that in terms of really how they kind of grow their businesses. Yeah. Um, I really want to kind of start focusing a little bit more on that because obviously this is a growth show and, and you know, to, in order to help people kind of grow their businesses, um, you know, I think we need to kind of start looking into the future a bit more. So, I mean, what are your thoughts? I mean, I, I kind of, um, where we are right now is obviously challenging for everyone. But where, where do you see this ending? Um, you know, is there, is there kind of light at the end of this tunnel? Um, you know, in your opinion, I guess based on conversations again that you're, ha you're having with, you know, lots of different people, um, what, what, you know, what, where is that light? You know, what does it look like? Yeah, I think, um, first of all, that's great that you've, you've given me such an easy question to answer, right? So <laughs> let me just go. We just go below my desk here and get my crystal ball um, and then start to see all perhaps I think I've got one of those old magic eight ones on my desk, the, the old executive toy that I can shake. Um, but no, it, it, on, a, on a serious note, obviously, I so to, to give everyone an idea out there, I'm on average at the moment having six to six to eight calls a day um, talking to businesses that are either looking for just some support, some help um or, or some real direction as far as what to do so i think we and and that's a, and other guys in the organization as well so i think we're having um a good look through the looking glass as it were as, as trying to understand you know not not just regionally but also from a global perspective obviously because of our offices locations we're seeing what 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 the what the feeling or the sentiment is so i'd say that if you look in very much in the B2B space, which still is able to operate, um, you know, you, we are seeing that we have to get on with something. Um, you know, we have to continue to work. We, you know, things still need to be made. Production still needs to go on. Um, and now it's almost like a, a transition into living with, right? As opposed to kind of sitting back and then, and then waiting for things to happen. I think what we're seeing more of is, is people kind of getting up um, and, and actually moving forward, which, uh, which, which I think, so it's positive in, in that yeah. sense. Um, again, for the people that can, right? You haven't, um, given, you haven't given me a date though yet, Andrew. What, yeah, what, yeah, date exactly, does, yeah. what date does it get better? Okay, um, you know what, let's, let's do something interesting. So if I, if, I put, if, I put a, if I put a date out there, um, yeah, let's, let's do the, 8th of August. There we go. So that's when uh, that's when that's when things start to, to to look a bit better. I'd I'd say from what we've seen and conversations we've had, it is looking more likely Q3, Q4, um, and then Q1 into next year. As far as where we know from a balance perspective, you know what how we've been impacted. Again, are those budgets going to be pulled back? Are uh, but there, there there are other organisations that their numbers have, have kind of skewed or their whole business model has changed, you know, sure. due to this. So this yeah. is, this is real. This is where I think it needs time to really understand uh, because some business, for example, has, has continued. I mean, logistics uh, from a, from a delivery perspective, sure. from e-commerce, sure. yeah. et cetera. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, no, I think I think. Some what about you? Are, I mean, I, look, you, you. Yeah, you, I'm, 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 you I'm, I'm, said I'm me. Actually, are you going for the eighth sure. of August as well, or when? No, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm much less optimistic. If I'm honest with you, I, I don't. I, I, I feel as if, um, look, if we can live in a post-COVID world mm. in August, or you know, and, and, and I'm not saying totally sort of. No, I said living with. But, I don't think. Yeah, I think it's going to be yeah, not yeah. post for a while. But, but to yeah. but to a point where you know we can we've got much more kind of freedom of movement and you know freedom of movement without fear, is yeah. is the big one for me. I think that's that's where things will change. Mm. Um, if that's August, brilliant. I'm I'm not so sure. Um, and I think it was obviously be dependent sort of country to country from an economic standpoint. Um, you know, I think what this has done is fast track to recession and I think it'll be a big global recession on the back of this. Um, the U S stock market is just absolutely crazy. So while they've lost, um, you know, their job numbers are up to what, 15% unemployment. Yeah. Yet the, yeah. Yet the uh, stock market is again at an all time high. Mm. Um, really kind of makes no sense so that just feels like a huge bubble that could potentially burst at any point mm. um so so look the impact of this is i think it's going to be slightly longer I, I you know if we're into a recession then that could maybe head into you know middle of next year perhaps uh end of end of 21 maybe even even into early you know 2022 um you know until we see a really kind of strong and full recovery but i think like what you said uh it, it differs industry to industry um you know there's obviously some sectors that are doing really well now uh, we've seen uh, businesses pivot who were perhaps very kind of traditional in nature we've mm -hmm. now really been forced to look at things like e-commerce and, and and things like that yeah. um so I, so i feel as if uh, there'll be some innovation that happens during this time because people i think their survival instincts will really start to kick in if they haven't already yeah and 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 you know when biz, you know, when entrepreneurs have survival instincts, it's yeah. generally great. You know, there's new innovation, there's new things that happen. Um, well, I think you know, it, even inside larger organisations, there's been almost a few memes going around where, about digital transformation. It's like the five step plans of digital transformation. Step yeah. one, COVID nineteen, and then suddenly everything kind of gets approved and everything happens through. So some of this, yeah. you know, the sheer force of nature has has really driven some plans that were already laid but just accelerated them massively yeah. um to, think, to try and to try and battle through you're right you're right and look i think i think it's also sensible to say that i think the world that we kind of come out of i guess you know when if we look at mm. you know, potential covid issues now uh, potential recession i think the world that we move into post these two things is going to look very different right yeah. so uh, you know i think we're gonna we're gonna see a lot more um i don't know i think just much more kind of remote working um yeah. i think as if you know business travel is going to be massively impacted um you know so i can't see people jumping on a plane for for just a single meeting for example which i think you know a lot of us have done in the past. yeah we've done we've done <laughs> yeah we've done frequently you know so yeah. and and, and yeah. but again you know because now the whole world is comfortable with zoom because the whole world has been forced to adopt it yeah. Uh, at the same time, right? Which is such a kind of unique moment, right? Because because yes. I feel as if this was just a UAE problem or a UK mm -hmm. problem, you know, the other countries that you operate may not kind of, you know, but, yeah. but for me, why, why doesn't this guy just come and see me, right? Um, whereas now everyone has just been forced to um, adopt technology. You know, you mentioned mm -hmm. digital, digital transformation and obviously this is a part of it. Um, the comfort levels are increasing, you know, so we've been having Zoom calls for years, but yeah. the point is that comfort levels are now there, right? So everyone's right. very comfortable with, with getting on the speaking. Um, you know, we've got a video on policy, at, uh, you know, in our company where if you're on a Zoom call, you have your video on. Um, yeah. But I'm seeing, you know, I guess if we look at the last two months, the big change I'm seeing now is that even, even kind of sales or client meetings that we're having, um, videos, more videos are on than there were previously. Yeah. So, you know, I think there's that whole sort of comfort level there. People are connecting remotely. Um, yeah. And so it's going to be a different world. And I think within that different world, people are going to have to adapt to things like this. Um, so, you know, I think, I think, you know, there's going to be a whole load of challenges. There's going to be a whole load of jobs being lost, a whole load, a whole load of lives that are going to be impacted uh, between now and that point. Um, you know, but hopefully, you know, there'll be some positive. And if you look at, you know, 
global economies over the last 50 years, you know, post recession has always been a recovery and then some more, right? Yeah, and, yeah. And, there's definitely know, for, opportunities, yeah, that are kind of, yeah. and, and that's tough sometimes to, to think about that um, because obviously you may be in a very difficult situation personally or know people who are, uh, but yeah, there's definitely, I think also the way that we're so connected as a society now, um, because if we look back to 2008, 2009, the online space looks very different. The demand economy, the, uh, you know, the, the fact that you can uh, work remotely very comfortably, they don't have to necessarily be in country to even understand that country uh, because yeah. of data that presents itself online. So I think that that is a big game changer as well, as far as how this recovery um, happens and also possibly the speed of it as well. Uh, because it is easier to, uh, you know, activate certain tools or, or uh, penetrate different markets or exactly pivot your whole business, um, you know, into a different direction. Yeah, no, I agree. Look, Andrew, I think it's a good, good place to stop there. Um, thank you very much, guys, for all of your input today. Thanks yeah. for participating in the polls. Um, the idea of those polls is really that it will give us, uh, you know, perhaps, you know, topics that we need to go into a little bit more detail. In. Exactly. So really yeah. it's the information that you give us, that allows us to give you more information back and perhaps more help and support. So, yeah. Uh, so thanks again for participating. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Um, Andrew, some final words of wisdom. <laughs> words of wisdom, just cause I've got a beard, eh? Um, <laughs> I think, um, I, I think we just need to, um, remain, positive but not delusional so i think uh, that's that's really the uh, the kind of message here that i think just there is there is positive activity happening out there i am seeing it every day um new business is being closed as far as uh, sales coming in i don't mean close business so i think that that positive energy we need to to kind of you know hold on to that and then and then carry forward but uh, looking forward to talking about you know this and, and other topics over the next uh, next few weeks months etc yeah. and now i've got a, a calendar date that i need to look out for as well so yeah thank you everyone okay. for staying tuned today awesome Catch so guys this is a weekly yeah it's a weekly show um and so we'll, we'll be sending out the details of the next show uh, very shortly yeah. um so yeah please try and tune in if not we'll be able to send you a copy of a show afterwards so um yeah. that's it looking forward to kind of seeing you all next week all right take care bye Thanks. see you